men's day to sing, so Roy, you want to come on and sing? Okay. Well, it's the, it's the fellow's day to sing, Roy. It's your turn. <laughs> Alice Faye volunteered you. She didn't tell you? She didn't? Okay. Hey, Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house this morning. It's good to see you. Enjoyed those songs, uh, wonderful songs. And, uh, of course, today is a, a special day for us at the church as we uh, celebrate the week of Thanksgiving. And, of course, you can smell it already, but once the service is over, we'll be going downstairs to enjoy a, a, a meal together. And then afterwards, uh, uh, our kids are going to get together, and they're going to talk about some things they're going to do, which I'm really excited about. And then we're going to build a fire out there, and we'll hope certain people don't fall in it. Yep. And you're welcome to stay as long as you want to, uh, till dark or later, we'll stay as long as you want to. The kids don't have school tomorrow, so we'll just stay all night, won't we, Grayson? Yep, we'll stay all night. I didn't hear Kelly amen that. Uh, <laughs> he, can <stay. laughs> he can stay with everybody else, yeah. But uh, uh, this is a special week, and Wednesday night, those of you who can come Wednesday night, and I know that for those of you who are having dinners on Thursday, uh, if you need to be uh, preparing those meals, I totally understand that, and I will not be angry with you. Well, I won't get angry with you over much anything, really, not unless you don't leave me no dessert when I get down to eat today. Then we'll have to have a conference, as it were. But if you can't make it Wednesday, I understand. But those of you who can come Wednesday night, uh, we're going to have a testimony type service, a Thanksgiving service, if you will, to give you guys an opportunity to share with whoever else is here what you're thankful for. Maybe it's something this year that God's done for you or something you'd like to share or maybe it's just something, uh, maybe it's your life, a testimony of your life. I don't know. But those of you that can come, that's what we'll do Wednesday, and we'll be looking forward to that. So uh, before everybody quits paying attention and starts thinking about food, turn in your Bibles to Psalms chapter 92. Psalms chapter 92. With the thought of thanksgiving upon us, I thought I'd preach this morning, and God's given me some thoughts on what we should be thankful for, what we should be thankful for. And there are a lot of things. I've got uh, six thoughts I want to give you this morning. Now, don't let that scare you. I will, it won't take long to cover them. Thanksgiving's Thursday, so we got, we got time. So we'll, uh, we'll just, we got, we got four days, Jimmy. That's, I can cover it in four days, surely. But uh, Psalms chapter 92. And let's read the first, I guess, five verses for context and then we'll go from there. Psalms chapter 92, the first five verses. If you got it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving uh, kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the work of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. Father, we can't thank you enough for allowing us to come this far into another year, to the time of year where we stop and remember all the wonderful things that you've done for us and brought us through. And today, as we stand before your word, we uh, want to acknowledge that, acknowledge just how wonderful of a God that you are. We thank you for everything you've done for us. Most of all, as the songs were sung today, we thank you for that blood that was shed for us. And we pray now, Lord, that your word would penetrate our hearts. Let your spirit have his way, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You be seated. Thank you for standing with me. <clears throat> this time of year, a lot of schools will take their younger kids, kindergarten and preschool and first grade, and they'll ask them what they're thankful for. And if you've ever read things like that, they are just uh, hilarious uh, one time Chase brought home something uh, talking about what uh, it, it was either being thankful for or it was about Mother's Day, something about her. But in part of that, uh, he said, uh, if I can remember it correctly, she was thankful for men. She was thankful for, uh, was it firemen, men, and something else. <laughs> Brandy was just so embarrassed, you know. And uh, uh, I want to read you a few things here that some of these kids that I found were thankful for. Some of these are pretty creative. This one kid says, I'm thankful for ceiling fans and Hot Wheels. And 
um, I guess as a kid, that's pretty good. This one kid, and some of you parents can appreciate this because you might have a kid like this. A little three-year-old uh, boy said he's thankful for corn because you can see it in your poop. <laughs> ah, that was actually said by a three-year-old who was asked to say the prayer at Thanksgiving dinner. So he said that as his family was praying around the table. Imagine being the parent of that child. This one said, my four-year-old daughter told me that she's thankful that her brother isn't a monster because if he was, he would eat her. That's pretty good. This one kid says, I'm thankful for gas. And <laughs> it doesn't go any further. Just thankful for gas. Uh, this one little girl said that she was thankful for her brother and her sister, her scissors, her new scissors, my bell movie, my bell dress, my cat Figaro, my bed, my blanket, and steak. <laughs> Mom and dad were nowhere to be found on that list. Uh, one little girl said, I'm thankful for shoes, getting new shoes, and people who make shoes. That was probably Angie <laughs> wrote that. <laughs> this is actually a different one from the little boy I told you about a minute ago, but this one little girl said she's thankful for mommy wiping my poop. So I guess we, uh, little, it's the little things we take for granted. One little girl said she's thankful for toilet paper. Uh, one little five-year-old girl lived in Iowa. She was asked, and she said she was thankful for the Statue of Liberty. Her teacher asked her why, and she shrugged her shoulders and said, well, why not? <laughs> so, okay. Uh, let's see. One said, uh, thankful for cookies, lots of cookies. Uh, let's see. One little boy, he was five, he uh, said he was thankful for his dog, but he doesn't have a dog. He's got a little brother. So... One little kid said, I'm thankful for snowmen, daddy, and quesadillas. <laughs> so you imagine what you imagine what they do. Uh, let's see. This one family visited a farm for three days, and the daughter was asked, and she said how thankful she was to have seen a cow pooping. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I've ever been thankful for that. You see a trend, though. Some of these kids just get hung up on certain things. <laughs> That's quite funny. I don't believe I've ever been thankful for some of those things they've been thankful for. But as I look back on this year, and as I think about my life, and I think about what God's done for me, not just in my life, but just in the past year, uh, there's so much to be thankful for. And David says there in verse 1, it's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing His praises to the Most High. And we've done some singing, and now I guess we need to talk about being thankful because we live in a troubled time with a world that is hurting and the people are going through a whole lot. Our prayer meeting nights, uh, it seems a prayer list, sometimes it gets longer and longer and longer. And I can imagine if everyone was here on prayer meeting nights, that list would probably be pages and pages long. But there's a lot of burdens, there's a lot of things, there's a lot of heartaches, and sometimes it's easy to get caught up on all that stuff, and we tend to forget to be thankful. And I'll tell you, it's of the Lord's mercies. The Bible says that we're not consumed. We should be thankful that we're still here another day. And I just want to give you some thoughts. Like I said, i got six of them. I want to talk about, first of all, we should be thankful for our blessings. Can we agree to that? We should be thankful for our blessings. We should thank God for the good things that He's done. And now, you may wonder, well, I wish God would do something good for me. I've had a rough go of it here lately. And I, I don't doubt that. I know there's lots of people going through some difficult times. But if you'll think, it won't take you long, I don't believe, to find some blessings that God has done for you. I would uh, take you to certain places this morning where people aren't able to get up and to leave their home and to come to a church like this one or maybe to go downstairs after this is done and have a meal like we've had or go outside and sit by a bonfire and, and sing and talk and just enjoy each other's company. There's a lot of people today that don't have that privilege. And you can think back, and I don't, I don't have time to, to talk about every little blessing that God's probably give to you, but I encourage you this week, a week of thankfulness, to thank God for your blessings. And if you're not sure how many there are, there's an old song that's Count your many blessings. Y'all know that one? Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings. See what God has done. That's a good old song. Count your blessings. Be thankful for them. Secondly, be thankful for your blessings, but you stay with me when I say this, but be thankful for your burdens. Be thankful for your burdens. Look at verse 2. 
to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. Can I share something with you? If it wasn't for burdens, we wouldn't know what blessings were. If it wasn't for the hard times, we wouldn't know what good times were like. And I dare say this, if it wasn't for burdens, most of us probably wouldn't be here. Think about it. If it wasn't for burdens, we wouldn't pray. If it wasn't for burdens, we wouldn't sing. If it wasn't for burdens, we wouldn't look for each other for comfort and help and talk to God and ask God to help us. We ought to be thankful that we have burdens. Now, I'll tell you that's hard because there's been times in my life where I was not thankful for anything God was doing for me right at that moment. You ever been there? You get to praying and the only thing comes out is, God, what did I do? What have I done to make you so mad at me? What have I done to deserve what's going on right now? Lord, what is this? My friend, listen. If you'll read through the Bible, and many of us, when we talk about Bible characters, if we started talking about David and Daniel and Joshua and, and uh, Paul and Peter, and we'd say, how many of you would like to be Christians like old Paul was? Boy, we'd raise our hands. How many of you like to have faith like Daniel? Boy, we'd raise our hands. How many of you like to be used of God like Abraham was? Oh, yes, preacher, I'd love that. Go back and read their story. You'll find how they got to where they were. God didn't come down and say, Abraham, you follow me. I'll make the road clear. I'll make the path straight. There won't be a pothole. There won't be a mud hole. There won't be th thorns or briars. There won't be nothing on your journey, Abraham. You just take off, and I'm going to make it perfect for you. You read his story. You read anybody's story in the Bible you want to. You read those Bible characters, and you read about them, and you'll see that burdens came their way. You'll see that through adversity, their faith got stronger that through troubles and trials and everything that got thrown at them, that's what made them the people we admire today. You know what's going to make your faith stronger? Burdens. You know what's going to make you walk closer with God? Trials. We often think God's being mean to us. God's trying to help us. God's trying to grow us. God's not trying to punish us. Listen, don't forget this world is cursed. Don't forget this world is cursed. Don't forget that still all applies don't forget, though, that there's blessings in the burdens. I'm thankful. We should be thankful for blessings. We should be thankful for burdens. And I'm thankful for the brethren this morning. I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for all of you, even Roy. Right, Alice Faye? We're thankful for Roy, aren't we, Alice Faye? Go like this. Show me some conviction there, Alice Faye. Go ahead. <laughs> I am thankful for you. I'm thankful every morning that God lets me be the pastor of this church. You cross my mind frequently. Sometimes I hear about things. I was telling Chris and Chad they had a little bit of run of tragedy here a couple of weeks ago, and I didn't know about it. And when I found out, my heart just broke for them. I don't understand what all they went through. I don't understand what they're still going through with it, but it breaks my heart to know that somebody that God has put me on this earth to help is hurting. I love you guys. You know that? You don't have to love me, but I can love you. Amen? I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful to get to spend time with you. I'm thankful to get to come here on Sundays and Wednesdays and whatever other nights we get to come. I'm thankful for you. Yeah, I'm thankful that we're going to go and up to where I work and, and sing for them on the 15th of December. I've been telling everybody, hey, my, my church is going to come sing for y'all. And boy, you'll love it. And somebody said, well, I can't sing that good. Well, they can't hear that good, so you're in luck. <laughs> I'll tell you the trick. Put all the kids in the front, and we could sound like cats obeying at the moon, buddy. It won't matter. But I'm thankful. But I'm thankful for you. I'm so thankful. Jimmy, I'm thankful for you. You, the, you, the, you got the most sense of any preacher here. <laughs> Ain't no other ones here this morning. Yeah, me and you. You got the most sense of any preacher here. <laughs> But I'm thankful for you. And I hope you're thankful for each other. The Bible, I don't know if you've ever read the church covenant that hangs in the church, but it's pretty good. There's a reason God established the church. There's a reason God made it the way he did it. It's so that we could be together. Jesus is in heaven. The Holy Spirit's been sent here to dwell with us. But Jesus said, I want it more. I want more for them. I want them to be one. John 17, I think it is, Jesus is praying, and he's praying that exact thing, that they would be one, 
that they would find unity in the Spirit, that they would find a bondness in the gospel and love each other like I love them and care about each other like I care about them and help each other like I can help them. I'm thankful for the church. I'm thankful for you. And I'm thankful for everyone that comes in and out these doors. Some go and some stay and some are searching. I'm thankful for new brothers and sisters like Brooke. Amen. That's wonderful. Don't Brooke look good for a newborn? Amen. Then Christ, she's still young, but she's on a brand new journey now. And I know you're thankful for that. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for my blessings. I'm thankful for burdens. I'm thankful for the brethren. These next three you'll know. I'm thankful for the book. What book you mean? Not Harry Potter. This one. <laughs> I'm thankful for the book. The book that stands above them all. You know what this is. It's, it, well, it says the Holy Bible. But it's more than that. That's the only word man can give to it. This is the voice of God himself. Amen. This is the thoughts of God himself. This is the instruction of God himself. This is the love of Jesus Christ in written form. This is the hope for all the future in written form. This is not just a book. You see, I can write a book. I've tried three or four times, but I never get finished. I'd have to write short stories. <laughs> yeah. But it, the book I would write, you see, wouldn't be like this. There's lots of people. Anybody here wrote a book before? Some of you might have wrote a book. Jimmy's got a library full of stuff. He could have a book. But maybe you couldn't write a book, but I'll tell you it'll not be like this one. This is what they call the living Word of God. Now, not the living Bible. Don't confuse the two. That living Bible's trash. Amen? I shouldn't, I shouldn't say that. Garbage. We'll call it garbage, not trash. You get where I'm going. But this Word is alive. You know how many times I've needed a Word from God? Besides every day? <laughs> I need a word from God all the time. Now, the Bible says that God's not speaking new revelations. He's not giving anything additional to his word anymore, contrary to what some of our Mormon brethren and different ones think. This is the finished work of the word of God. And sometimes I need something from God. I need him to speak to something, to help me, to give me something to go through the day. Sometimes I wake up and I got to face something and I don't know how to face it. It's like, God, help me. You know where he'll lead you? Right here. And you say, well, the answers to everything can't be in there. Yes, they can. <laughs> and they are. I'll tell you, the answers to everything are in the Word of God. Well, preacher, God don't understand 21st century technology. Cell phones and internets and Facebooks and snap filter chats and stuff and all that. God don't understand all that beg your pardon he let it happen you think you don't think there's answers to that what's your question about it you'll find an answer in here this world's mixed up on what's right and wrong isn't it you know how they can figure out what's right and what's wrong you know how they can figure out what's truth and what's not right here all this money getting spent on trying to figure out which bang made man what kind of monkey jimmy come from is it the same kind of monkey i came from you know how many millions of dollars been spent on that if we took all that money that's been spent on finding out what kind of monkey Ron is, amen, we could, what the things we could have done, what things we, we could have probably cured some of these diseases. We could have probably, there's no telling what we could have done, but we still spend millions and millions of dollars in the name of science to find out where we came from. You know where we came from? We came from God. We came from in the beginning. God created and you just finish a sentence from there. I tell you where birds come from, God. I tell you where monkeys come from, God. I tell you where humans come from, God. I don't have to have all them degrees to figure that out. The Word of God gives all the answers. And I'm thankful for this book. I hope you're thankful for this book. Have you ever read it? Well, it's a good one. It's a good one. It talks to you all throughout it. And by the way, once you have read it, God can then recall it to your memory. He can't recall things you've not read. He can't remind me how to fly a plane. You know why? Because I don't know how to fly a plane. 
Paul told, uh, I think it was Timothy or Titus 1, he said, I put you in remembrance, though you already knew this. He said, I'm reminding you because I know you knew it, so now I'm reminding you. God can't remind you of something you never knew. I can be reminded how to ride a bicycle. Now, balance is a bit of an issue these days. <laughs> but give me a bicycle, give me some time, and I'll ride again. You know why? Because I've rode them before. When you take the Word of God and put it in, you don't have to memorize it all. Some people have that ability and thank God for them, but I don't have it. Read it. I can't remember everything I read. Read it anyway. You will be surprised. There will come a time where you'll be crying out to the Lord for something. There will come a time when you'll see something, when you'll hear something, when you'll be a part of something, and God will jerk something back from here in your mind and remind you of what His Word says. Hey, I'll tell you, there are things. I love having a good Bible. My, the, one of the first Bibles I had's in here in my office, that Schofield y'all got me. Long, that black one, you remember? A long time ago. Go like this. Hello. Go like this. Yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm looking right at you. Holly, this is what I, you know. Hey. You may. <laughs> <laughs> but that Bible in there, the covers fell off of it. The pages are falling out of it. But I'll tell you, I remember where the verses of Scripture are on the page. I think of a verse, and I remember it's at the bottom right corner in thus and such a book. Now, this Bible, I've been using it for several years, and I'm starting to do that with this. But what is that? It's the book, the precious Word of God. And I am so thankful for the blessings of God. I'm thankful for the burdens. I'm thankful for the brethren. I'm thankful for the book. And as we heard sung just a few minutes ago, I'm thankful for the blood. Are you thankful for the blood? What can wash away your sins? You tell me. What can wash away your sins? What can make you whole again? Nothing can for sin atone, but not of good that I have done, but Nothing but the blood of Jesus. You need to understand something. Without the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm not here. You're not here. God's killed us off a long time ago. The law of God is righteous and it's right and I can't keep it. I'm here this morning because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'll tell you this, if I die tomorrow, I'm going to heaven. You can believe that if you want to. If you don't think I'm going to heaven, you can be wrong if you want to because I'm going. How am I going? Because I've been called to preach. A lot of people think that, Jimmy. Well, every preacher's going to heaven. No. <laughs> Turn on your TV. You'll find a whole bunch ain't going to heaven. I shouldn't have said that, should I, Jimmy? It's true, though, ain't it, Jimmy? Hey, just because you're preaching don't mean you're going to heaven. Just because you sing in the church don't mean you're going to heaven. Just because you teach Sunday school don't mean you're going to heaven. Just because you come to church don't mean you're going to heaven. It takes the blood, the blood of Christ shed for you. If the blood is not applied, you will not see God. Well, you'll see Him, but you'll see Him as judge and not as Father. When I see Him, I'm not going to see Him as a judge up in the chair ready to decide my fate. I'll see Him as my Father. You know what? You remember the story, and I always loved this story, the prodigal, you remember? When he decided he was going to go home. You know, mind you, he had got his inheritance early, wasted every bit of it, went out and lived in sin, lived in worldliness, lived like the devil, did everything he was told not to do. And he finally decided, I'm going to die like this, I better go home. The servants that daddy has is eating better than me. I'm going home. But I wonder what crossed his mind. As he crossed those hills back to home, now it's a parable, so this is not a, a factual story, but let's take the parable and dig in it a little bit. I wonder what the young man might have thought as he was crossing those hills headed back home. He might have said, man, I'm sure I'm glad I'm going home, but Daddy's going to be so mad at me. <laughs> oh, oh, boy, he's going to beat me to death. I don't know. I just, well, we're going to go. And he was, can't, you, can't you feel maybe he was nervous? But the story says that when the father, who was evidently going out and looking for his son, frequently when he looked out over those rolling valleys he saw his son now I don't think he was close enough to see his face but when it's your kids you can tell you can tell how they walk 
you can hear their voice and know it's them your kids ever been in a group of 30 and they'll say something and you hear their voice above all others that's a parent for you we hear that you can uh, there's a picture back there uh, that, that they took when the kids were jumping out here and they took a picture of them as they were all jumping as the sun was setting you could you can't see their faces but I can go through and pick out every one of them I can pick mine out first and then I can see the rest of them you don't have to that father looked out and he saw by the walk that's him and the Bible says the father ran and fell on his neck, kissed him, gave him everything back. That's how I'm going to stand before God. I'm not going to stand before God with him throwing the book at me like he should. I'm not going to stand before God with him condemning my things like I should. I'm not going to stand before God and have to give an account for why I did this and why I did that and why I sinned and did this. He's going, I'm going to stand before him as a, fa as a son that's been forgiven by his father. When the father ran and fell on his neck, he didn't say, why are you so stupid? I told you before you went and did what you did. I told you you was going to mess up. I told you not to do that. I told you so. That's what we do. He ran and hugged him and says, Welcome home, son. <laughs> hey, one day when I get there, the blood's paid my fee. The blood has paid it all. And one day when I get home, he'll run and I'll run and I'll fall at his feet and I'll praise him. He'll say, Welcome home, my son. And I'll be home forevermore. Oh, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Christ. Do you have the blood applied to your life? How do I get that? Ask. Jesus said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open. Brooke, you got that blood applied. I've got that blood applied. Do you? If not... What a better day to get it applied than today. Oh, friend, all you got to do is ask him. Say, oh, Lord, I'm a sinner, and I know it, but I believe Jesus died for me. I believe he wants to save me, and if he will save me, Lord, please save me. And that blood that was shed on Calvary will be applied. And just like the mercy seat in the Old Testament, when the blood is applied, that's when forgiveness can happen. And through Jesus' blood, we find forgiveness. And then we'll find the last thing today. I'm thankful for blessings, burdens, brethren, the book, the blood. And lastly, I'm thankful for the blessed hope. You see, that blood's been applied. So now, as I go on, however long the Lord has me to be here, I've got something that the lost man don't have. Besides a multitude of other things, there's one thing that stands above for the human, and it's hope. You know how many people in this world have no hope? You know how many people in this world die without hope? The suicide epidemic in this country is unreal. Our veterans are dying at numbers that are staggering. We've lost more to suicide than we have to wars. We're losing them so quickly. And now we're losing kids. We're losing kids, teenagers, kids the age of the ones in this church. We're losing them. Why? Because they don't have hope. And my friend, it'll take me and you out too. But I've got something because of Jesus. Hope. No matter how bad it gets here, I always have hope. This I recall to mind, the Bible says, therefore I have hope. Recall the blessings. Recall the burdens. Recall your brothers and sisters in Christ to your mind. Recall what the Bible says. Recall the blood that Jesus shed. And you will find hope to keep going. To go another day. I saw a uh, statue. This was at a graveyard. It's a real, not a statue, but a headstone. Or, you know, sometimes they'll put like a statue-looking thing as a headstone. I don't know what they call those. But anyway, what it was, his father had it made for his son. He died 10 or, 10 or under, 8, 10 years old. But he was evidently handicapped and some several medical. But the the statue was of his son coming out of his chair with his eyes and his hands reaching towards heaven almost like he was being lifted out 
his feet were coming down beautiful and it was really to me a powerful picture it showed me that that father knew my son's okay because he had hope look I don't know what's going to happen down here I may turn up tomorrow with some disease and it kill me Peggy's going through something right now lots of folks you know everybody in this church has people they know struggling with health and different just cancer is such a scourge on this world and it's real easy to give up hope but I'll tell you this all the trouble all the demons in hell all the everything that anything can throw at me will never take away my hope because when this life's over I'm going home Revelation says we're going to a city where there's no night there's no sun there's no moon for he is the light a city the song says where no storm clouds ever gather no rainy days no depressing cold wet rainy days like we had this week a city made of gold gates made of pearl walls of jasper I'm going to a place that's perfect and to beat it all when I get there the Bible says God's going to reach down and we talked about this a couple of weeks ago he's going to wipe the last tears away with those last tears go painful memories painful experiences hurt all the things that destroy us here will be wiped away and we'll be in perfect peace forever is it any wonder he said this I recall to mind therefore I've got hope David said verse 1 to the Lord no he said it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto the name thy name O most high to show forth thy loving kindness for thou, O Lord, hast made me glad, verse 4, through thy works. Verse 5, O Lord, how great are thy works. Verse 6, a brutish man don't know it, neither does a foolish. Verse 8, but thou, O Lord, art most high forevermore. Verse 9 talks about his enemies. Verse 11, going on down and down. Verse 15 says, to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Is he your rock today? I'm thankful for everything I've shared with you and we could talk for hours and hours but today I'm thankful what are you thankful for are you thankful that your sins though they be as scarlet are washed as white as snow just wash me and I'll be whiter than snow let's stand together all around the church today <clears throat> as we stand if we're able to stand let's stand heads bowed and eyes closed just for a moment Do you have anything to be thankful for today? Above everything else, I hope that you are thankful that He has saved you, forgiven you. If He's not yet done that, you are the only thing stopping it. He said He's willing. If you'll come, He won't cast you out. He's just waiting, waiting on you. Would you come to Jesus? You can be a brand new creature. Corinthians says, old things passed away, hold all things have come new. You can walk new, talk new, be brand new today. And you won't be an enemy of God. You'll be a son and a daughter. And there's nothing he loves more than his children. Father, I stand in your presence this morning very thankful for these things we talked about and so much more. But Lord, I'm thankful you let me preach one more time. And Lord, I feel like we've put forward your words, your heart, your desire that all should be saved, your desire that your children should walk in fellowship with you. Lord, I think we've done all we can do. Now we stand back and let you do what you will do. Your spirit have his way. God, if there's any here that are not yours, but you want them, show them today that Jesus will save them. Let them come and have that blood applied. If there's those who are struggling with being thankful, remind us, God, of how wonderful that you are. And even in our darkest moments, you're there and that you're going to help us. God, if there's those that need to come for prayer, if there's different things, if there's folks just need to talk with you about something, let them come. And we pray in Jesus' name.
Amen.